Hello, biology students. We're going to do biochemical cycles, also known as nutrient cycles. Let's jump in. So first, let's define what this means, biochemical cycle or nutrient cycle. It's a process by which a molecule will move through the living and non-living storages on Earth. But since it's a cycle, that means it's going to go around and around and around, over and over again. There's a couple major cycles we're going to learn about in this course. We're going to talk about the water cycle, the carbon cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. So let's start with the water cycle. Sometimes the water cycle is called the hydraulic cycle. So we first have to understand that the water cycle is driven by the sun. It transforms or changes the state of matter. So sometimes water will go from different things like liquid to gas or gas to liquid, exactly. So that's what we mean by transform. And as it moves through the cycle, it's going to be really categorized into two major parts, the living stuff and the non-living stuff. So let's really jump into some of the different components within the water cycle. And specifically, this is mostly the non-living stuff. So water vapor from the atmosphere will condense and precipitate or fall to the Earth's surface. So we know that condensing is going from a gas to a liquid, all right? And precipitate is going, um, will be going from a gas to a liquid as well, right? Sometimes water will seep into the ground or the land. Some will call that infiltration. When water is moving very fast across the land into a bigger body of water, that's called runoff. And sometimes water will return to the atmosphere going from liquid to gas, back up, making clouds, and that is evaporation. Then we have some living parts, right? So in plants, which are living, biotic, we know that water will be absorbed through their roots from the soil, and water will move up through the plant, through those roots, through the shoots, and eventually when it gets to the top part of the leaves, it will leave the leaves, going from a liquid to a gas, evaporating, and we call the evaporation through plants transpiration. Sometimes we think about this as plants sweating. So that's just evaporation through the leaves of plants. New vocab word, transpiration. Important one. All right. So we can see that as a really big part of being in forests. It's one of the major parts of evaporation out of the plants. All right, let's switch cycles. Let's talk about the molecules that carbon exists in. So really, when we talk about the carbon cycle, a lot of times we're going to be talking about carbon dioxide. So we know plant, plants take carbon dioxide from the air to make glucose that could be used by other animals. We know that process is called photosynthesis, right? Taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, making glucose. All right, when they do that, the organism, whether uh, the organism, the plant will get bigger. It'll gain more mass or biomass. That's how trees grow. All animals and plants, though, right, they will perform cellular respiration in which CO2 will be released. All right, so CO2 comes into the living things by photosynthesis. CO2 leaves living things by respiration. But we kind of knew that already. Okay, what else? Well, when living things die, they decompose. So in decomposition, living organisms will break down into their building blocks, and that's done by decomposers. Decomposers will release CO2 through cellular respiration when this happens. Over time, with lots of heat, time, and pressure, those broken down, decomposed parts will form fossil fuels. So we have a swamp long, long time ago. All these things will die over time, and they'll be really condensed and pushed, and eventually it'll form fossil fuels like coal. We as humans, we will burn those things like coal and other fossil fuels, and we burn it, that's called combustion. And that stored carbon, right, that was in the leftover living, the stuff that was condensed or coal, it was trapped, it will release into the atmosphere, all right? So CO2 will be released. This also happens not only with coal, but with oil, and when we burn forests, 
anytime something is being burned that is a living thing, it's releasing CO2. Okay, now for our last cycle. This is our most complicated cycle, and it's okay if it's a little complicated because you'll learn a lot more about it in IB Environmental or IB Biology. So the important reason why we need to understand why we talk about the nitrogen cycle is that most of the Earth's atmosphere is actually nitrogen. It's 70 to 80 percent, even though we usually think about it as mostly oxygen. Whoa, so much nitrogen. All right, but it's super silly because most of that nitrogen that's in the air is not usable. And it's in this form of N2, a gas, but we can't use it, even though it's the most common form. So why would we need to use it? Well, we as humans have nitrogen in our DNA, and we also have nitrogen in our protein. So we actually need nitrogen to be able to survive. It makes up a lot of our building blocks and our molecules. So we need to get usable nitrogen. So the nitrogen cycle is all about which parts are usable nitrogen and which parts are non-usable nitrogen. All right. So the limiting factor here is where's the usable nitrogen? Our nitrogen cycle is really complicated. There are going to be four or five major parts, okay? I know it says four. It's actually five. Lied to you. That's okay. You'll survive. Um, so we're going to go through each of these step by step, okay? Um, and we're going to do our best to make sense of it. So our first step is going to be nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is fixing the nitrogen to make it usable. We're going to convert that unusable N2 gas um, so that it can be used by living things. Fixation can occur by mutualism using symbiotic bacteria on legumes. We've been doing a lot of learning about legumes because legumes are really cool because they can make nitrogen available for other organisms because of this cool relationship they have with bacteria. One other really cool way that nitrogen can change forms to be usable is through lightning strikes. If lightning hits in the right place, it can actually, that energy can make nitrogen change forms. So, so far we've talked about nitrogen fixation, taking the unusable nitrogen and making it usable. Okay, can be on legumes or be just in the soil. Now, ammoniification. Ammoniification is another way to convert unusable nitrogen from dead organisms into a usable form. So this is usually done by a bacteria, okay, in the soil, and it, just like before, is changing into a usable form. That's all, okay? So the whole idea, you don't have to memorize all the terms, nitrogen 2, NH4. The idea is we are trying to convert nitrogen into a usable form. That's the big idea. Okay, next we have nitrification. So we've had nitrogen fixation, ammoniification, and nitrification. Now we're having soil bacteria convert that ammonium ions that we just made and we're going to make it into even more usable cool forms. So this is just more of this bacteria making cool forms that are usable. Do you need to know what these different words are? No. If you know that soil bacteria can fix and change nitrogen into more usable forms, I am super happy. Yay! But you don't need to have it memorized all of the individual crazy names. Okay, so assimilation and really right this is part four so ignore Claus in here part four assimilation of usable nitrogen right plants will absorb these usable forms that are in the soil or if they were legumes they already had them so that's how plants will get the usable form because plants need protein and DNA too Animals will assimilate nitrogen by eating the plants that got the usable nitrogen. So if we look back to our picture here, how do the different organisms get the usable nitrogen that's now in the soil or now in plants? Well, either plants will absorb it through the soil, the usable forms, or the animals will eat the plants. That's all this is saying. Okay, and again, why do we need it so bad? Because the nitrogen is used for proteins and DNA. All right, this is part five, all right? And so part five, this is our last part. 
Sometimes by accident, those usable forms will accidentally convert back into the unusable forms by some bacteria. We remember that the denitrifying bacteria is the ones that take it back. D means to return that prefix, and it's going to return them back to this sad, unusable form. All right, that was super complicated, but guess what? You made it. Woo!